Alright everybody, welcome back to my Aurora 4X Let's Play. So, where we left off last, um, George Abel over here has uh, finally managed to ex explore the rest of the system and is on his way back for refueling. Both of our jump explorers are on their way. Uh, they're going to be taking a break at home once they arrive before moving on to explore the rest of our um, local area. So, our, it's been a few days for me, so hopefully I won't forget anything important. So, just going to run through real quick, make sure that we have everything we need. We're actually going to set these up to upgrade as well. And I want to get both all of my shipyards up to 10,000 capacity. As our first warships are probably going to be around that size. That's fine. And we'll continue on. Now one thing you'll notice is that with the auto turns active, um, few low fuel warnings will interrupt your auto turns. So that's just something to keep in mind for if your ships are running, starting to run low on fuel. But that should continue on. There we go. Alright, continuing on. Oh, got a new scientist. Oh, looks like we have ourselves a missile guy. He's not that great, but that's excellent. All right, jump drive efficiency is done. And squadron size is, go is going up. We'll get one more level of efficiency because we want to have a few ships in our jump group. Sorry, well, with efficiency, we will, uh, we need efficiency because the more efficient your jump engine is, um, the um, smaller the engine has to be to jump a larger ship. Um, it adds about 50, ton, 50 tons of mass, I believe, for every level of efficiency, and then that's multiplied by the size of the actual jump engine as well. So, um, it can very quickly um, get you very good jump capability. So, we'll get this up another 10. <clears throat> Moving on. Questions? Overhaul complete. Uh, George should be a little bit longer. But what we'll do is we'll actually send the Mark and Aronson out and see if we can find something. So we're gonna now. So squadron, a standard and squadron transit. Um, a standard transit will jump an unlimited number of ships as long as they can use the jump engine. So, um, so you know, the squadron multiplier, right? The squadron multiplier technology, um, it's <clears throat> currently being researched, this one, okay? So this rating is ignored for a standard jump. So even if you have a squadron of, one, of three or four, um, you will be able to do a squadron st a standard transit with any number of ships as long as they can all use the jump drive that you have. Um, keep in mind though that if you have a military uh, a military ship with a military engine and a commercial ship with a commercial engine, um, the fleet will will not work. So it will not do a, st a standard transit because 
um, the standard transit order will only use the jump engine of one ship to try and jump the entire task group. So it's not smart enough to realize that, hey, all, the, all my military engines have, all, all, all my military ships have military jump capability that can handle them, and all the civilian ships have civilian jump and jump capability that will handle them, so the entire fleet can jump. No, it's not smart enough to figure that out. It just uses one jump engine to try and jump the entire task group. So if you have a mix of civilian and military sh um, uh, ships, um, a standard tra uh, this won't let you transit. So you'll basically need to split your military ships um, and your civilian ships apart into separate task groups and then jump them separately. You can always reform them on the other side um, or just tell them to, tra to travel uh, separately if that's practical. Uh, but that's just something to keep in mind. So if you're doing a standard transit and all your ships have enough jump drives uh, but are still complaining, that's probably going to be why because they have a mix of military and civilian jump drives. So, but, so, but for our one ship, standard transit will do. Um, so it's switched to the unknown system. Obviously, we don't know what's out there, so there's nothing listed. Um, but we're going to set it up to do an immediate geological survey. And we are going to send it on its way. And there we are. Um, so... Exploration of a new jump point will stop auto turns, so something to note. Okay, so we have found the Canberra system. Right over there. Okay, so we've got a planet all the way out in the middle of nowhere. Do we have planets? I believe I have. There we go. Okay, yeah, so we got ourselves a little planet out in the middle of nowhere, and a few planets on the inside. Although these will look like they're probably going to be a dwarf planet. Yeah, so those are dwarf planets. So we've got three dwarf planets, one way out in the middle of nowhere, um, and the rest of the planets seem to be tucked in nicely. Uh, around the middle, and the whole thing is only about a 10 billion kilom uh, kilometers across, so not too bad. And we will move our system here and save positions. So you hold down shift to move the systems around, and ooh, what do we have? We have So we got, also we have seven planets. So we've got one, one body between three and five. And seven bodies between two and 2.9. So this is pretty nice. This is going to be a fairly nice system. Let's have a look at it in more detail. All right. So we have a large moon with a 2.0. Two more moons with a 2.0. Um, we have a terrestrial moon with 2.35, another large moon with 2.0, another one, a small terrestrial planet, so with 2.0, um, no, that's going to be one of the dwarf planets, and another large moon. They've got, they got sevens, um, but sevens are still reasonable. I've got a whole bunch of sevens, uh, a few eights, a ten. That one's going to be a little bit iffy. Whole bunch of asteroids, which are uncolonizable, of course. Except for this one. How bizarre. Must be a very large asteroid. What is it? Diameter 1400. Yeah, that's a very big asteroid. So, that's... Half the size of this moon. Cool. And it's actually not much smaller than this moon. Very interesting. Anyway, um, so yeah, looking at it, it's a, this is probably going to be our first colon, um, habitation hub because there are just so many planets that are so very easily colonizable. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of minerals there are. And um, my biggest concern at the moment is actually going to be 
this planet here, right? Um, because, probably not though, because with the ammonia, that's going to stop any NPRs from being generated. Um, but the atmosphere is very interesting. And these ones, not so much because they're so high cost that no NPRs would have been generated with this one. Um, but, yeah, some of these could potentially have NPRs. So let's go exploring. So we're going to do eight hours so that it ticks along nicely and so that it doesn't jump too far um, so we can spot any anything hostile. But generally, if, if you're this far into the system and you haven't been jumped on, um, then you're probably going to be fine. Lots of minerals on here, which is very nice. Ooh, here we go. A stable wormhole has appeared. I think it's about time that we think about starting to construct our military ships. So I'm going to let this run of tech finish. I'm not going to add any more, and then we will start making military ships. <clears throat> Mark Arison is probably in a bit of a dangerous situation at the moment. Okay, capacity has been added to Earth. I'm thinking, um, okay, so I think it's about time that we also think about what kind of shipyards we'll need and how many of them. So, um, Canberra is going to get moved to a different shipyard or, di or scrapped altogether for the moment. So this shipyard is what we'll use probably for our main command ship. Uh, actually, no, we'll use this one for our command ship because um, it's only got a single slipway and you're going to have maybe one command ship to multiple combat ships. So we'll use this one for combat ships and this one for our command ship. So um, I'm thinking that we use this one for our beam ship and we'll use this one for our point defense ship and this one can be our command ship um and we'll put probably um i'm thinking maybe we can stick some we'll probably use it for a fuel resupply ship now we're going to be using cannons so we're not we're not going to need a collier or an ammo supply ship um so that'll be fine and these three well, we've still got to figure out what we're going to do with these ones, but uh, we're building up capacity, and that should be fun. Let's make another 10 on there. Right, let's move along. Yep, no, not five days. Eight hours. Yeah, so notice, even though we jumped 10 days, um, it's, a, it's, re it's managed to explore all of this in about less than five days but even though we jumped 10 it only got a little bit of exploration done and that's because as i mentioned um in a previous episode it only adds new orders from its default orders at the between ticks so at the end of the cycle so because we jumped a full five days um it finishes its order list to explore a few a few bodies and then it stopped because it was waiting for that to refresh so, George is done. So we haven't run into anything hostile just yet, so we will go and explore this one. And 
we'll continue exploring this. System of Sydney. Yeah, it's picking up Australian names mainly because we're using the Australian theme for our empire. So, uh, because we're not using the realistic stars, it's just generating star names out of our empire. So, let's go. Let's look what's in here. Let's have a quick look at Sydney first. So, what do we have? We've got another one for 2.0, another one for 2.0, a few more twos, a four, a six, three, two more sixes, and a terrestrial one of five. This one could be good. Yeah, so we'll let them work. Yeah, it's discovering lots of minerals. All right, there's our laser focal size done. So now we'll bang out the ultraviolet laser. And once that's done, do we have the, do we have the spinal mount yet? Yeah, we have the st standard spinal, but not the advanced spinal, that's fine. Yeah, so once that's done, we will design our lasers. So now that we know that that one's not hostile, we do have these two, the Gior Giorgio and the Antonio Abetti. So it looks like we've got two by the sister ships. So we'll detach Giorgio, and we'll send him through jump point three with the order two survey. So you don't necessarily want to send out all your survey ships at once. If you do that, you might trigger multiple NPR spawns, however unlikely that actually is. Um, and if you trigger multiple ones, then you may not necessarily uh, be in a position to deal with both of them. So um, something to keep in mind. Oh, this one doesn't actually seem to have any bodies at all. How disappointing. Oh, we'll do a grav survey, and we'll see what we can discover. With no bodies, there's no chance of an NPR, so we'll go ahead and just take Antonio Betty and send him through number four. Water turns. Combat drop module is done. Excellent. Keep on going. George has finished exploring. We'll move to the system map. So the system map button, as I said, it takes you to the system that, that they're in. And next up is Grav Survey. So let's have a look at Sydney. So empty, empty. You can see by the S's that, that it's empty. This one has minerals. What do we got? Uh, Corbomite, 9 million Corbomite at 0.9, very nice. And we got 8.8 .8 million of Macassium at 1, that is wonderful. Uh, we could make all the research labs from that. And we got a few more million as well at good uh, accessibility, uh, well, at reasonable accessibility, which is nice. Uh, we've got Sorium, well that's a, that's a super giant, so... Um, of course, it's just Sorium. Uh, on this large moon, we have lots of Geranium, Boronide, and more Macassium, Iridium, and Corundium. So this is going to be producing mines. 
which is good. So we'll tag this as a colony. Uh, for the corbamide and the macassium, we'll tag this as a colony. Um, this one here, sorium, 23 million sorium. Well, I think our fuel situation is not going to be a concern. So we'll tag that. This is the, no one's going to need a fair amount of terraforming because we've got methane and chlorine. 0.24% um, chlorine. What's the atmospheric pressure? 0.38. That's not going to be too bad. Um, so it, we've got a fair amount of pressure that we need to strip out. But once we do, we'll have a, um, a bit of nitrogen on there, which is nice. And it's half, almost half of the planet's ice sheet. So as soon as we get the temperature up, that's going to melt. That's going to give us a serious temperature boost. And then we should be fine. So we'll cover that further in terraforming. More sorium from a gas giant. What else do we have? We got a bit of geranium and sorium, which is nice. 100,000 boronide with decent accessibility. Uh, this one's got 0 0.1, but it's got a couple million of nice things, so that's good. We're not going to tag it for a colony just yet. So, okay, so we've got a few colonies that we want in Sydney, which is excellent. <clears throat> we'll move along. Camp, now, so yeah, the, so the stable wormhole will actually change location. So um, it may not. So setting up a fortified um, exit point is not going to be practical. Um, usually changes every couple of days, I believe. So yeah, we'll move along. Still no hostile contacts. I think we're out of explorer ships though. Yeah. All right. I also believe we're done with the asteroids, so let's bump it up to one day, get things done a bit faster. Okay, got a system of Adelaide, and this one looks like it's completely empty as well. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, don't have any... Um, ships there. That's fine. Wait, did I set his... New. There we go. Oh, that's a jump point. Okay, that was nice and quick. Punch capacity. It's fine as it is. Alright, squadron size of 4 is done. Yeah, four should be fine. That's a command. That's a one jump ship and three or three um, cannon ships. So, yeah, we can work with that. Um, I will be trying something a little bit different where, when it comes to jump ships uh, for this playthrough. Um, I want to test um, some ideas uh, in terms of squadron jumps and stuff like that. So. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll explain all uh, my theories and stuff in detail once I actually start constructing the ships. So, um, yeah, we'll keep going. Okay, capacity added. New jump point in Sydney. Another one in Adelaide. So finding a fair amount of jump points now. Okay. That's another 5,000 to the shipyards. Okay, they're all finished upgrading themselves now. What do we got? We still got a fair amount of time before the ultraviolet laser is done. 
but the power modifier is finished soon, which I believe will let us shift its five labs into um, our laser. Fire control speed rating is going to take a bit longer. And we've got beam fire range, so that one's going to have to keep chugging away. Uh, composite armor should be done relatively soon as well, so that's nice. So we'll keep going. All right, Mark Aronson is finally complete. So we'll set it to do a grab survey, see if we can figure, figure out anything about that wormhole. And we'll sort these out real quick. So yeah, Sydney and Canberra are going to be our primary um, points of expansion because Adelaide and Melbourne are practically empty um, and these two have lots of planets that are easily habitable. Not that, that. Now, because of the amount of bodies, I'm going to just go in here and just completely get, um, get rid of anything that doesn't have any actual minerals on it. So now we'll only see the mineral worlds. So Super Jovian, of course, it's going to have Saurium. Excellent. Um, small Moon, not very much, but good supply. Some more Saurium here. Um, bit of minerals here. Okay, here we go. Our first Moon. Lots of Macassium. Lots of Iridium. Lots of Corundium. Wonderful. Okay, this is... Methian ammonia again. Um, wow, that's actually pretty good. Lots of galasite, lots of corbomite, lots of geranium. So this is a nice planet, except for the methane. So we'll stick a colony on there. Okay. Decent amount of galasite on this one. Nothing too spectacular there. Oh, look at that. Duranium, Corbomite, and millions of Macassum and Iridium in 0.1. So this is going to be a definite colony. All right. Decent amount of Geranium on this one, which is nice. Uh, lots of Geranium here. So we'll definitely back this one. And this one has more geranium. We'll leave that one alone for now. Boronide. Ooh, this one's interesting. Look at this. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight resources in the thousands with one accessibility. So this one is going to be a good little mining point. Same with this one. This one's got tens of thousands, which is nice. The reason why I'm not tagging these asteroids for colonies is because I'm going to strip mine the whole system anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, like this one. Oh, this asteroid is really nice because geranium is in 300,000, so this asteroid is definitely going to be a prime target. But yeah, like I said, they're, they're all going to get strip mined anyway, so it's not that big a deal to tag them right now. And, yeah, we can go through these. So, Canberra is going to be a very nice system. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to set up a home world. So, with a home world, you basically want to have it somewhere near your jump point back home. So, where is a jump point to Seoul? Out there. So... For this system, it's not really going to matter which one it is, because they're all going to be about the same distance. So what we want then is we want a colony that is going to be the most easy to set up a habitat, a colony on. Um, I think I'm going to go for, actually, we had one that was, that could easily make mines, didn't we? Or was that in the other system?
Clarendium. Terranium. Terranium and Clarendium. No, not that one. Hmm, must have been in the other system. So what we're going to do is we'll take the easiest to colonize. So we've got a large moon and a, ter and a, terrestri and a terrestrial moon. Uh, this one has no pressure at all. But this one is bigger. It doesn't really make an impact, but it's bigger. And it's got an ice sheet, which means it's very easily going to be um, give that final kick in terms of temperature. Uh, but we do have to strip out a fair amount of ammonia and... Well, not necessarily the ammonia, but we're going to have to strip out a fair amount of the methane, um, which is going to cool it down, and then we're going to add in... Actually, if we add in the greenhouse first to get the temperature up, that'll melt the ice sheet, which will get the temperature up higher. Then we can remove the methane. And the methane is a greenhouse gas, so it's going to keep the temperature high. As we remove it, it's going to drop the temperature. So if we get the ice sheet melted first, that means we have to get less uh, greenhouse ga gas in there to keep the temperature up. So I think that's how we're going to go. So we're also going to rename it. We're going to call it Canberra prime because this is going to be our system homeworld there we go and i'm also going to do the same for adelaide no not adelaide no with sydney yes i'm also going to do the same for sydney uh now one of these was it this one geranium and corundium it's got lots of 0.1 Okay, this is the one. This is the one that's probably going to be our home world. So we'll go to Sydney. Here's Seoul. This one sounds re good, but it's also going to be the furthest away as well as the closest. So which one was it? It was... This one? A5 moon 4... A5 is here, so it's nice and close in. This can be our home world. So, rename body Sydney Prime. There, there we go. Now, we're going to need jump gates um, for optimal colonization, but we'll cover, we'll get to those momentarily. For logistics, we're also going to get a hangar deck. The hangar deck is the most efficient um, module you can add to give you capacity. But I'll double check that when we actually start building carriers. All right, there's our research lab. So we'll throw that into here. Just actually, no, we'll give it to. I want to get the lasers out, so we'll give it to Kate. I actually have spare production, so we'll go and set that. Because it's finished, we've got the next 10%. Um, we'll go for... Get research lasers up to 20. Keep him building at the same speed. There we go. Moving on. New job point found. I think we're actually going to be running up on our ten minutes at the moment. I had to stop pausing, uh, stop recording. 22 and 11. Yeah, we're over time. So we'll put a cut here and we will continue on in the next episode. Thank you for watching.